getting a lot colder really quick. I guess winter's coming soon, huh? And with that in mind, what's going on today? I thought this was actually really fascinating in terms of a story. It dealt with a drone spying per se, and why it was interesting is usually when you hear these types of stories, people are saying it's hovering, capturing videos, for example, of people without their, I guess, knowledge. Whereas in this case, apparently it dealt with some kind of investment or financial firm and there was a drone that landed on the rooftop and stayed there for a while and it was collecting things like data. So that's kind of interesting. And how this unfolded is apparently this security researcher posted all these details of what he discovered, what it was doing and so forth. So it's kind of interesting. So you can read here, it was posted online. This guy says, this would be a threat discussing a real world breach involving a drone delivered exploit system that occurred this summer. Some details I'm not able to discuss, however, for the blue teams and red teams out there, I hope this provides a good measure of capability. During this summer, an East Coast company specializing in private investments detected unusual activity on their internal confluence page that was originating on their own network. The team isolated the confluence server and began incident response. During the incident response, they discovered that the users whose MAC address was used to gain partial access to their Wi-Fi was also logged in from their home several miles away. The team deployed embedded Wi-Fi signals tracing and a fluke system to identify the Wi-Fi device. This led the team to the roof where a quote modified DJI Matrice 600 and a modified DJI Phantom series were discovered. The Phantom was carrying a modified Wi-Fi pineapple device. It appeared neatly landed and was not damaged. While the Matrice was carrying a case containing a Raspberry Pi, several batteries, a GPD series, mini laptop, a 4G modem and another Wi-Fi device. It was located near a HVAC vent system and appeared to be damaged or hindered. That's kind of crazy, huh? And it makes you wonder what exactly were they doing? What kind of data were they trying to, I guess, take as well? It says, during their investigation, they determined that the DJI Phantom drone had originally been used a few days prior to intercept a worker's credentials and Wi-Fi. This data was later hard-coded into the tools that was deployed with the Matrice. These tools were used to directly target the internal confluence page in order to target other internal devices from credentials stored there. The attack was a limited success, and it appears that once the attackers were discovered, they accidentally crashed the drone on recovery. That's kind of fascinating, huh? It says, to summarize, this setup was estimated over $15,000 USD for a one-time attack scenario. Attackers are spending this range of budget in order to target your internal devices and are okay with burning it. This is the third real-world drone-based attack I've encountered in two years. To clarify, two of these were real-world offensive actions against a house and a business, and one of these was my red team during an engagement. Learn from your attackers, adapt your capabilities to identify, detect, and mitigate. This is the reality we live in now. And kind of interesting, I guess, with this drone spying on the area, taking data and so forth, I guess the recommendation is people should use their own drones to monitor the area as well. And I guess for what he wrote here, for Red Team's building capabilities, I would recommend the Phantom 4 as it can carry approximately 6 pounds and it's not insanely expensive. That can hold a case with Hack5 and Flipper Zero tools which would be ideal in many attack scenarios. But I'm not a drone expert so your mileage may vary. I don't know if that would be the best nowadays anyways, especially this thing is not even in stock in a lot of places as well, like just in terms of regulations, attaching this and that, especially doing these types of work. And it says, a few people were asking why the initial drone was not recovered and left there. Honestly, I do not know either. There could have been a plan to recover it later, a failed recovery attempt, weather battery issues, maybe it was YOLO all the way. Burn that money to get those creds. That's kind of strange to think about too, huh? In terms of the drone being undetected, something so huge like a Matrice staying on the rooftop for that long. Well, this made people paranoid in terms of well, any drones around a building now, even if it's like a recreational person, you must be spying on me either through taking pictures, for example, or stealing someone's data and all that. And at the same time, I guess it shows it's basically just a tool because even they say you should use your own drone basically to monitor the area and all that too. So it's kind of fascinating overall. And the other thing that seemed to be big here in terms of the news, apparently there's going to be some kind of rule put in place where people can't buy any more handguns? It says freezing the market on handguns. Fewer guns mean safer communities. 
That's why the government of Canada is implementing some of the strongest gun control measures in a generation. Handguns are the weapon of choice in most firearm related crimes, which is why limiting the number of handguns is a critical part of our plan to protect Canadians from gun violence. The Prime Minister Justin Trudeau today announced the national freeze on the sale, purchase and transfer of handguns comes into effect. From now on, people cannot buy, sell or transfer handguns within Canada and they cannot bring newly acquired handguns into the country. Now with this, there's all these little facts they post, for example, saying handguns were used in 59% of the violent crime involving firearms between 2009 and 2020. And there are 70% more handguns in Canada today than in 2010. It's kind of like that topic where I said before, I personally don't use a gun, but I don't see how stuff like this makes it safer or makes a person like me feel safer. Because again, it feels like you're targeting people who are already doing it legally because a lot of the crimes to my knowledge too is people using quote illegal firearms so it's not licensed and all that so how does this help that situation at all what's stopping that gangster from buying a quote gun illegally somewhere else bringing it in shooting people for example it's just this topic i don't know it just seems too emotional for a lot of people and as i mentioned before i have to try to look at it from a neutral standpoint even I was personally surprised to learn where gun owners here in Canada, apparently they go through a really strict process in terms of where you can bring the gun and so forth. For example, if they're bringing it to a shooting range, they have to bring it from point A to point B. They can't stop. They can get randomly checked by police officers and all that. Like it's really strict. So with that, I know a lot of people have the perception where you can just carry around this gun everywhere. Apparently they can. So that's kind of interesting to think about in that sense, which again, I don't see how this helps overall and even I guess there's some articles saying this I guess regulation or whatever won't stop illegal handguns and it's kind of true too how are you gonna stop the quote illegal people that would be my concern is it just one of those situations where it's taking people's rights away per se versus actually solving an issue on a quick note, I've been getting all these messages from YouTube where apparently there's gonna be changes for example something called YouTube handles I think that's trying to universalize it like a lot of other sites where it's at your name. It's supposed to make it better to identify you're talking to the real person. And it seems like they reserved everything for you according to this anyways. So mine's will be what? At Alan Yu. And as well, they apparently released some new tools which makes it easier to make little, I guess, video clips of your longer videos. Maybe I'll try that too. But yeah, some changes overall it seems like. I think it should be better overall with those changes anyways.
See you guys later.